Hi there, and welcome back to Health Awareness. If you are looking for clear, trustworthy updates on HIV treatment breakthroughs, you are in the right place. Let's jump straight into today's important development and what it means for you. For more than 40 years, the world has been told the same thing again and again. We're close. A breakthrough is coming. This time will be different. And yet, here we are. Millions of people still living with HIV millions, more infected since the first promises were made, and an entire generation asking a painful but reasonable question, why has an HIV vaccine failed for so long? Today, we're not here to sell hope, we're here to tell the truth, because before we can talk about what's changing now, we need to confront something uncomfortable. Science didn't fail because it didn't try, it failed because HIV is unlike almost any virus humanity has ever faced. Over 30 million lives have already been lost to HIV and AIDS worldwide. And even today, despite major advances in treatment, about 1.5 million new infections still occur every single year. That means this is not history. This is not a solved problem. This is an ongoing global crisis. So when people ask, why should we believe this time is different? That skepticism isn't ignorance. It's earned. And that's exactly why this conversation matters. Today, we're not revisiting basic facts. We're not repeating slogans. And we're not promising miracles. Instead, we're answering one core question. What exactly stopped every HIV vaccine effort for four decades? And what, scientifically, is finally changing now? Because something has changed. Not in politics. Not in funding. But in how scientists understand and train the human immune system itself. To understand that shift, we first need to understand why everything before it failed. To appreciate the scale of the challenge, we have to start with what has worked. Antiretroviral drugs transformed HIV from a death sentence into a manageable condition. For millions of people, these medications suppress the virus to undetectable levels and allow long meaningful lives. That achievement cannot be overstated. And beyond treatment, the use of these drugs for prevention through PrEP, has saved countless lives by blocking infection before it begins. But here's the uncomfortable truth. Even when medications work perfectly, they depend on something fragile, human behavior, daily adherence, lifelong access, consistent healthcare systems, social stability, and globally, those conditions are never guaranteed. Medications are powerful, but they are not a permanent population level solution. A vaccine would be. A vaccine doesn't require daily decisions, it doesn't depend on flawless systems, it works quietly, internally, and durably. Which brings us back to the question, why hasn't a vaccine worked? The first reason is mutation. HIV replicates using an enzyme called reverse transcriptase, and it makes mistakes constantly. Every replication introduces mutations, and one person living with HIV can produce billions of viral particles every day. That means the virus is evolving in real time, even inside a single body. By the time the immune system learns to recognize one version, the virus has already changed. This makes traditional vaccine strategies nearly useless. You're not fighting one virus, you're fighting a moving swarm. But mutation alone doesn't explain everything. HIV doesn't just change, it hides. The virus is coated in a thick layer of sugar molecules called the glycan shield. This shield blocks antibodies from reaching the viral surface. It disguises the virus as self and prevents immune recognition. Beneath that shield lies the viral spike protein, the tool HIV uses to attach to and infect immune cells. That spike looks chaotic and flexible. But here's the crucial insight. The virus cannot change everything. It must still bind to CD4 receptors. It must still fuse with cell membranes. It must still survive. Those functions impose limits, and within those limits are conserved sites, small regions the virus cannot afford to change. For decades, scientists couldn't reach them until something unexpected happened. In the early 1990s, researchers discovered that a very small number of people living with HIV had developed rare antibodies. These antibodies didn't target one strain, they neutralized dozens, hundreds, sometimes even more. They were called broadly neutralizing antibodies, or BNABs. These antibodies were different, they were longer, more flexible, more precise. They could slip past the sugar shield and bind to the virus's most essential conserved structures. Their existence proved something profound. A universal HIV defense was biologically possible. The problem wasn't whether the immune system could do this. The problem was that it didn't know how. So the question changed. Instead of asking how to attack the virus directly, 
Scientists asked, can we teach the immune system to build these antibodies intentionally? This is where the revolution begins. Traditional vaccines work by showing the immune system a threat and hoping it remembers. But HIV doesn't respond to reminders. It requires training. Think of it like developing an elite athlete. You don't start with the hardest challenge. You start by identifying rare potential. This first step is called germline targeting, activating the specific B cells capable of evolving into B and AB producing cells. Once those rare cells are identified, training begins. Through a carefully designed sequence of vaccine shots, each one slightly different, the immune system is guided to evolve. This process is called affinity maturation. Each step forces improvement, stronger binding, greater precision, broader recognition. For years, this was only theory. But recently, early human trials showed something remarkable. The first step worked, and worked better than expected the right immune cells activated, the correct pathways engaged. For the first time scientists weren't guessing, they were guiding. So where does all of this leave us? After 40 years of failure, the most important breakthrough may not be a single vaccine candidate. It may be understanding, understanding why earlier strategies collapsed, understanding why HIV could not be treated like other viruses, understanding that brute force would never work. Now, the immune system isn't being shown the virus, it's being trained. That shift matters. Not because success is guaranteed. It isn't. Not because a vaccine is imminent. It's not. But because science is finally aligned with reality. Aligned with the biology of HIV. Aligned with its mutability. Aligned with the limits and the potential of human immunity. And perhaps the most important legacy of this struggle extends beyond HIV itself. The techniques being developed now are already influencing how researchers approach other complex diseases, from chronic viral infections to immune evasive cancers. In that sense, the decades spent fighting HIV were not wasted. They forged tools that may protect future generations from threats we haven't even named yet. For millions of people living with HIV today, the future still requires treatment, still requires patience, still requires vigilance. But the conversation has changed. It's no longer about guessing. It's about understanding. And sometimes understanding is the real breakthrough. Thank you for watching Health Awareness.